mix, but you know, there are some which are doing very well. Not able to actually meet their obligations uh, to pay their depositors over the course of that day, and, and they were shut down. So let's hope that we're basing for a bit of a bounce, particularly in the broader market. The Dani Group has put out a clarification on the exchanges with regards to the report that was published by the Ken yesterday. So they've declared their fifth interim dividend, 20 rupees 50 paise for the year. 10 6 in the Nifty, absolutely quiet. The Nifty just hovering around that 16,980 mark. There is a broadly a consensus emerging that perhaps we are more close to the bottom in terms of GDP growth rate. It was a large block of 4.5% equity changing hands. The Nifty has climbed above 17,000. It's up close to about 0.5%. I am uh, uh, not seeking for reappointment for the next term. Netweb, which is into high-end computing solutions, has filed its DRHP with SEBI for an IPO. We are seeing actually good pickup on uh, you know some of these more... Uh, Viral test marker. For the moment, at least, Nifty is up 54 points. Well, that was the day so far. You're with us here on a fresh new edition of Closing Bell. I'm Prashant. With me, my colleagues Reema and Surabhi. Nigel joins us from the newsroom floor. And of course, we are coming to you from the CNBC TV 18 Motor Rose Falls Studios. Guys, hi. I mean, the market on the Nifty is up uh, about 50, 60 points. Uh, but, uh, you know, the broader markets are doing much better, which I suspect over the next 60 minutes is going to be the bulk of the conversation which we will have with our guests. Uh, now, the, on the Nifty, just a quick word. Yeah, you know, it, it, it's a decent move. I mean, it's not, it's uh, 60, 70 points worth. It was up, it was more. But the gains still feel, at least on the Nifty, a little tentative. And if I can say, a little fleeting. And I guess that's because of the price action, the kind of market we've had uh, for the last uh, many sessions now. Uh, 60, 70 point gains uh, have been wiped out just like that in a few minutes. Uh, we've seen that uh, occasionally over and over again. So that's why uh, this is feeling a little tentative. <coughs> now, uh, the, the, you know, how, how do you determine that maybe gains are here to stay? You look at very near term levels. The last high was 17,207. That's a near term first resistance. And as of yesterday's close, the 20-day moving average is also around the same area that stands at about 17,230. So once you get past these levels and hold these gains above these levels, I mean, I think uh, some more confidence comes back. Now, broader markets, NIF uh, the mid-cap index is up 1%. The small-cap index is up about 1% as well. I looked at returns basically from uh, over the last 15 days, or precisely 15 days. Uh, the the small-cap index had lost 9%. The mid-cap index was down about 6.5%. So we are indeed seeing some pullback. And as we've been saying, broader markets are, uh, are the ones where we've seen a huge amount of damage. Uh, just, for, just for perspective, and this is a number I put out in the morning as well, 25% of the Nifty 500 stock universe, which is, uh, you know, and all, by the way, all 500 stocks have got market cap uh, over over 1,000 crores, actually more than 1,500 of the smallest uh, company in the Nifty 500 uh, basket has got a market cap of about 1,900 crores or so, a little less than 2,000 crores. So these are uh, fairly well-owned, uh, sort of not all liquid, but well-covered companies in many instances. And to a quarter percent of this is down more than 20% uh, this year, basically. You know, So uh, that kind of tells you uh, the kind of damage that we've uh, seen. Only 90-odd companies out of the 500 list is even higher. Forget about, I mean, percentage gains, about 10%, 20%. Only about 90 companies are even higher. So this is a space which actually uh, is seeing a little bit of a uh, bounce. Now, globally, on Friday, uh, we, get, we get the data, which is the inflation number, the core PCE number, which the Fed watches carefully. But between now and Friday, we get a couple of more things. You know, f flows, weekly money flows in the U.S. are important to watch. And what do I mean by that? One is uh, borrowing from the Fed, the discount window and the new facility which the Fed announced. Uh, and the second is flows out of equities and uh, other instruments into money market flows. Both highlight risk aversion. Things have been steadying a little bit. This week actually has been extremely steady as compared to the last two. One can only hope that we don't have uh, one more a catastrophe or crisis or panic uh, can't be ruled out. But at this point in time, uh, this Wednesday, I mean, things are looking a lot more calmer. 
Add to all of that, of course, the fact that tomorrow is a market holiday, at least here in India as well. Reema, hi. That's the hi. most important cue, right? You say the best for the last. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, just talk about the volatility. The market has once again started to sell off. So the Nifty has breached the 17,000 mark. So from the day's high, it slipped close to about 50-odd points. So just take stock of the market volatility. It is the March expiry. But talking about the stable global queues, you know, markets like the CAC, DAX, the FTSE, they rally close to about 2.5% this week itself in the first three days. And today as well, European markets are holding up fairly buoyant with gains of close to about a half to 1%. But a week-to-date picture will tell you the relative calm that we've seen across uh, equity markets this week. 1% to 2% gains. Indian markets have actually been the underperformer this week, just up close to about 0.6% thereabout. Individual stocks, Adani Group stocks are making a big rebound, come back after yesterday's drubbing, post the clarifications, big gains seen on Adani Enterprises, ports up 5 to 6% respectively. Autos are in top gear today, Aisha Motors, Bajaj Auto, on Bajaj Auto. You had JP Morgan reiterating their overweight stance with a target price of 4,400. So strong gain seen on Hero, m M&M as well. And Bharti Airtel on the losing side continues to struggle post the disruptive measures and um, announcements made by Reliance Geo, both on broadband as well as on postpaid. So Bharti Airtel continues to uh, reel under pressure. I think that's uh, that's really telling both Reliance and Bharti. They are the rank underperformers in a market which otherwise is doing uh, pretty well off, right? Uh, and perhaps it's because of this uh, tariff hike that now the street believes is, you know, just write it off at least for this calendar year. Uh, perhaps it's that disappointment playing out. But anyway, but Rima will talk more about that. We'll discuss uh, this with our guests. Just want to go back to the mid-cap index. Uh, as Prashant mentioned, bulk of the selling has happened in the last uh, you know, 15 odd days. Overall, we're talking, of course, a lot of underperformance compared to the Nifty in this month. However, this is a screen today. The advanced decline ratio is a very healthy uh, 2 is to 1 over 2,000 stocks advancing, just under 1,000 uh, stocks on the declining side. And uh, Prashant, I was just talking to a couple of people. There's also a, you know, a, a bull's theory that started doing the rounds for the, the first of April onwards. I think maybe it's hope, but it also sounds, you know, logical and commonsensical to me. Uh, see, uh, if you're pulling out money right now to park it in debt mutual funds, what about the reverse trade? Come first of April, you're getting seven percent in debt. You don't, you can't put it in MLDs. You can't put it in debt funds. You pay forty-two percent tax on that. You're left with a three and a half percent return. Would you H and I's? Would they rather not go and start parking it where you know we've seen uh, serious sell-offs? So I don't know. That's that's kind of a hopeful theory that seems to be playing uh, at least doing the rounds. Whether it plays out or not, we will have to wait till Monday. But uh, Nigel, for what it's worth, uh, right now the gains, at least some of the gains, are intact. But it's also expiry, right? Uh, not sure. Uh, still a very tentative. Fifty-five odd minutes to go. Well, the broader markets have performed, right, Surbi? Finally, after so many days of selling, we are seeing some bit of traction in the broader markets, and that is heartening. And that's actually the call that we made earlier this morning as well, uh, you know, when markets started, that the, it could be time that the broader markets could outperform. That's because, you know, there were participants that sold their positions, some of their positions where they were making some losses. That's because of tax harvesting. So that's behind you. And the other factor, some of these mid-cap and small-cap stocks, well, they've sold off to such a great extent some of them are not bad businesses, but liquidity was an issue and they were selling on the screen. So valuations have become attractive. So that's the reason why we said earlier today that the mid and the small cap indices, just pull up the mid and the small cap indices, both of them are doing far better than what the Nifty is doing. But since it's expiry, well, you'll ask me, what about the Nifty? How is that shaping up? The 17,000 put, the 17,050 call, they are the most active today. And the 17,000 put, the premium on an average today has been around 25 rupees. So that's why I'm deducting 25 rupees from around that 17,000 odd mark. And the 16,950 odd mark has to hold out. I'll tell you what, if that level breaks, you know, we could see a sharp decline. So just keep that uh, level on the downside, uh, uh, you know, on your radar. And on the upside, we went to around 17,050, 17,060, but that was ma met with some selling. So on the upside, I think 17,075 odd, that's the level that the bears will look to defend. We're in a bit of a range, but I'm looking forward to the lower level actually de getting defended. Otherwise, it's been a bad series and it could get far worse if that 16,975 odd level does, uh, you know, break. But let's see how things go from here, guys. Final 55 minutes and we're off for, uh, you know, an a, a, a intra-week holiday, which isn't such bad news. 
Well, look at that smile when you uh, <laughs> say that, uh, Nigel. That says it all. But let's tell our view viewers what's lined up in the next one hour. A whole host of stocks are in focus today. Z Entertainment surges as the company reaches an agreement with Innocent Bank on settlement of dues, pays the first tranche, and promises to pay the rest before 30th of June. This clears the deck for the merger with Sony.